Assalamu alaikum this is Asma Mushtaq from Double Vibes and in this tutorial I am going to discuss some of the properties of the non singular matrices first of all you need to understand what is a non singular singular matrix so for any matrix a if the determinant of that matrix is not equal to 0 then such type of the matrices are known as the non singular matrices so this is the identification either the given matrix is singular or not fine now the first property that i will discuss is if the matrix is non singular then it is invertible which means we can find the inverse of this matrix by using the formula a joint of a divided by the determinant of a fine so let's consider an example matrix a so here we can find the adjoint of a by switching the diagonal entries which is equal to 2 2 since they both are same so that's why they remain as it is while we will invert the of diagonal entries so basically we inverted their signs fine and the inverse of a is equal to adjoint of a divided by the determinant of a which is also represented by the straight line bars all right in this case the determinant of a is equal to 2 into 2 4 minus 3 into 1 3 so this is equal to what so that's why a inverse is simply equal to 2 divided by 1 which is 2 minus 1 divided by 1 minus 1 minus 3 divided by 1 and 2 divided by 1 so the inverse of a will always exist whenever the system is non-singular fine the next property is the columns will be independent columns and rows both will be independent so columns and rows will be independent what is meant by independent by the independent we mean that none of the columns or the row are non-zero scalar multiple of each other so considering this as column 1 and this is as column 2 i will try to find alpha times of c1 plus beta times of c2 it should be equal to 0 so alpha times of c1 is actually 2 3 then plus beta times of c2 which is equal to 1 2 and this should be equal to 0 0 fine so let's just apply the Gauss elimination method quickly and the row operation that i will perform is r3 minus 3 over 2 times of r1 sorry it's r2 fine so this becomes 1 over 2 and here we will have 0 0 okay so let's just perform the back substitution it becomes alpha times of 0 plus 1 over 2 times of beta is equal to 0 and this implies beta should be equal to 0 fine then 2 times of alpha plus 1 times of beta should be equal to 0 since beta is equal to 0 so that's why alpha is also equal to 0 and here we can see that here are no any non zero scalars existing whose linear combination is equal to 0 so that's why column 1 and column 2 are linearly independent the same can be checked for the row vectors and you can check and try and comment in the comment section either they are linearly independent or not by using the same method fine the third property it says that ax is equal to 0 has one solution so this property says that ax is equal to 0 has only one solution which means x is equal to 0 0 and this is exactly what we did over here this can be treated as the matrix a this can be treated alpha and beta vectors can be treated as x and this was equal to 0 and the only solution that exists is alpha and beta beta both are equal to 0 fine 
the next property is ax is equal to b means some non zero value b while b is not equal to zero will have a unique solution always so assuming that if b is equal to 1 and then 2 let's just write down this system again now let's apply the gauss elimination over here so it becomes r2 minus 3 over 2 times of r1 and this results the first row remains unaffected while the second row will be changed to zero this entry will be changed to zero this entry becomes 1 over 2 and when you will perform r2 which is 2 minus 3 over 2 into 1 for this entry so it becomes 2 so it 4 minus 3 over 2 again same so it becomes 1 over 2 right now fine and here we can see that 1 over if this corresponds to x1 this corresponds to x2 then it is 1 over 2 x2 is equal to 1 over 2 and hence we can see that x2 is equal to 1 now performing the back substitutions 2x1 plus x2 should be equal to 1 since x2 is equal to 1 so 2x1 is equal to 1 minus 1 so x1 is equal to 0 in this case fine and this is the unique solution because here is no free variable is present all the variables are the basis uh, basic variable so x1 x2 is the unique solution in this case and its value is equal to 0.1 for the particular value b fine so no other solution for this particular b will exist okay the next is a has n pivots So if you want to find the pivots of a system we will perform the RREF form of a matrix and we can see that this is the first non zero entry in the first column then this is the first non zero entry in the second column and the order of this matrix is 2 by 2 where n is equal to 2 so here r n is equal to 2 is equal to the pivots present in this system okay the next property is a has full rank rank which will be equal to n so it means that the number of non zero rows after performing the rref or ref on a matrix it should be equal to the number of columns in the original system so here we can see this is the reduced echelon form of a matrix okay and in this case the number of non zero rows are equal to 2 so n is equal to 2 which is the rank of this system fine the next property is all eigen values are non zero this is very interesting property so all eigen values are non zero let's just find the eigen values of this matrix quickly for finding the eigen values what we do we build the characteristic equation by using the formula a minus lambda i determinant should be equal to 0 so let's just write it quickly so 2 minus lambda 3 1 2 minus lambda determinant should be equal to 0 and from here we can write it as 2 minus lambda into 2 minus lambda minus 3 is equal to 0 let's just simplify it so it becomes 4 minus 2 lambda minus 2 lambda plus lambda square minus 3 is equal to 0 and from here by rearranging we can write it as okay so let's apply the quadratic formula for finding the root which is equal to minus b so b is minus 4 that's why plus minus under root 16 minus 4 a c divided by 2 a okay so on simplification you can see it becomes lambda is equal to 4 plus minus this is actually equal to under root 12 divided by 
2. So the one root will be lambda 1 will be 4 plus square root of 12 divided by 2 while the second lambda 2 will be equal to 4 minus under root 12 divided by 2. Fine. Okay, so it can be seen that the both eigenvalues are non-zero plus they are positive as well which also implies to the other property of the system and we can say that A transpose A will always be symmetric as well as positive definite matrix. So what does it mean? It means that when you will find the A transpose into A and then you find the pivot values, they will always be some positive number. Okay. And the last property is A will always has N singular values. So the singular values of the systems are defined as sigma and they equal to square root of lambda 1 and similarly sigma 2 will be equal to square root of lambda 2 fine and in this case under root of sigma is actually less sigma 1 is 3.73 while the under root of sigma 2 is 0 0.26 and it can be seen that the system is having two sigma or the singular values which is exactly equal to the number of columns in the system okay